Last session of the day, and we are going to go out with Bang, uh, with uh, Rich and John and Adam here, uh, three security experts who prove to us that any security expert has a last name that ends with an R. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, you guys want to give us like... Ends with an R sound. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, you, you guys want to give us a 15, 30 second bio? Sure. So I'm Rich. I work for Jetpack. Uh, primarily on Rewind and Press, which are two of Automatic's security focused products. Um, got a lot of experience uh, scaling media companies also, handling security, and performance, everything. Uh, I'm John, I work for uh, Bluehost. Uh, I'm on a team that uh, primarily, uh, our job is to contribute to Core in the community, WordPress Core. Um, before that I was at Boston University. Um, so both, both areas I've had to, uh, security is always in the forefront and making sure our, our code is secure because uh, as a hosting company and a university we're always targets for security breaches. We always have to make sure we, we had all that covered. So. My name is Adam Warner. I'm the community manager for SiteLock, a company that provides uh, cloud-based website security services. Um, I am a longtime WordPress user since 2005. I am not a developer, and I'm not a designer, and I'm not a security expert in terms of code, uh, but I try to spread the good word of security awareness and best practices for protecting your site or your online business. And uh, as we're going along, if you have any questions, you can text them to me, and I will pass them on to the panel. Uh, so to kick things off, uh, it's, it, a lot of people recognize that uh, one of the biggest potential vulnerabilities on any site uh, is between the keyboard and the chair. Uh, how do you... Uh, or, or what are, are some ways that you found uh, success in educating users on being uh, less vulnerable? Uh, well, so that's that's kind of where I come in because I'm um, I don't uh, like I said I don't write code, uh, so I don't come to website security from that side. But I come to it from the side of educating end users about the importance of website security. So one of, one of the things I do to relate the importance of security for your site to people is to put it in terms that they can understand. Um, and what that usually means is anyone who has a website typically has a passion or a business and that's the purpose of their site. So when we talk about website security to them, we, we, we put it in terms of protecting your passion or your business, right? Um, and, um, and, and from where I come from, it's all about educating people about security. And in my, my talk earlier, uh, that was kind of the theme throughout because a lot of people, when you talk to someone, the average business owner or maybe the non-technical person, they hear website security and they go either one of two things. My cat blog isn't important enough to protect. Why would anybody want to hack it? or security is way too technical, it's over my head, I don't want to hear anything about it. Um, so if you, if you kind of communicate the, the basic reasons why websites get hacked, um, it's a lot easier for them to process the importance of it. And I think from a different perspective, um, like a developer perspective, someone that's writing code for your website, um, following best practices, knowing about different, uh, like current exploits that are going on and how they're being mitigated and, and, and prevented for the future. Um, and just, just following, uh, WordPress does, when they do a security release and other open source projects, when they do a security release, they detail what it is and why it happened and how to prevent it. Um, so these things are very important to, to kind of have your thumb on the pulse of what's going on there. Um, and it's also an education thing. Um, a lot of people, I have some friends where they use, they say they use the same password for everything, but they don't really understand why that's bad. Um, or it might just be their dog's name and their birthday, and they may not understand why that's bad. Um, so a lot of it is just 
they don't understand how someone would go about trying to exploit something. So maybe if you explain to them, well, with a computer, that would take three seconds to, to get into your website and maybe show them a little demonstration um, and then it might click and then they might have that, that more secure mindset uh, in the future. Sure. Yeah, so I'm an old school code hacker, right? <laughs> This, this social engineering thing is actually a little bit above my head, but it's it's the new scary thing, right? Like, there are not a lot of kids in their basements, you know, writing programs that are as dangerous as social engineering has become. Responding to the wrong email, clicking the wrong button, these are the things that really get you in trouble now. And I think the solution starts here, in this room right now, right? Spreading awareness, explaining to you why password security is important why social engineering is something you should recognize and have training on. And, yeah. And, and clickbait and fake news sure. and getting people to share things that aren't true and people just don't read. They just see the headline sure. and, and so just a more intuitive mindset of asking why or asking who uh, and what, where this is coming from and just a simple follow up or a simple Google search and a lot of time disprove a lot of this stuff or prove prove it yeah, uh, fact true. Checking. Yep. Mm -hmm. so that that's just a very uh, it's always why and and how come and the, just being uh, analytical and more intuitive and, and questioning things is is another way John when you were at uh, VU mm -hmm. how prevalent did you see uh, phishing and spear phishing attacks internally we got a lot of different emails um, so it was everything from hey there's new HR training to uh, sign up for discounted health insurance as an employee. Uh, we got some really strange ones. Um, the most popular one was probably take this survey, like we're trying to get information. Uh, so a lot of times in Slack... It was made to look like it was an yep. internal survey? Yep, it was yep. basically like, hey, we're looking to get employee feedback. Um, so a lot, it wasn't uncommon. Probably once a month there would be someone posting in Slack, hey, did anybody else get this? Is this legit? Um, and then someone would follow up with, uh, people in the other departments that would have issued these research initiatives to uh, to say that it, and we, we had an email to forward them to as well uh, and a lot of times they would confirm or, or deny the legitimacy of it I know it, uh, it at automatic uh, a few years ago I think that might have been before you joined rich uh, one of the uh, projects of the week um, a, a group of uh, automatic employees tried to fish the rest of the company and uh, get them to enter their WordPress.com password. And they were able to successfully get credentials for more than 50% of the company. Uh, and these are you know, tech savvy people, mm -hmm. uh, including a number of members of like the, the executive team. Uh, yeah, I think when you, when you talk about security, one of the, the most important places to start is that awareness. Right, and, and so I, I tell this story walking through the city of Chicago after seeing a concert coming from the Chicago Theater uh, with my wife and getting that uneasy feeling, you know, your intuition, my hair's on the back of your neck, and I look behind and there's a guy uh, about a half a block away, and so I get that easy, uneasy feeling, I move to the other side of the road, he moves to the other side of the road, we move to the other side of the road, he moves back. So I was like, hey, honey, why don't we duck into this bar and get a drink? And I didn't tell her anything that was going on. We walked in there, and, and I'm not exaggerating. He walked by and went like this, just stared right at us as, we were, as he was walking by. Talk about a creepy feeling, but you relate that to website security and in your daily interactions, right? So it's good to be paranoid every day and aware of security uh, issues every day, but you have to really try and find that balance so you're not walking around, you know, peeking around corners. Um, so things like, you know, we're talking website security, but things like personal um, identity security. If you go to an ATM, um, you might want to look at where your card goes in. There's a video on YouTube, look for ATM Vienna, and you will see it's one of the green covers, <clears throat> and a guy goes up there and he notices little beads of blue on the, on the edge of the green cover, shakes it, and it's a, it's a card skimmer. So it's stuff like that every day that you can train yourself to be aware of, and then relate that, obviously, to your site as well. Yeah, gas pumps too. Yeah, yeah gas, pumps. gas pumps. Yeah. They started putting the stickers over the, 
yeah. over the uh, the uh, scarf the, the theme, yeah. Yeah. The, the theme of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if if you're interested, there's a great uh, episode of the podcast Reply All uh, called uh, "What Kind of Idiot Gets Fished," mm -hmm. uh, and in working on the story, uh, I think most of the members of the team were fished while working on a story about fishing <laughs> yeah. uh, and looking at it every day. Uh, so uh, and that's a helpful exercise too. Like maybe yeah. you work with a couple executives and a member of the security team if you have that, and you know try to fish everyone in the in the department and uh, make it so you can't see their password, but you would know that they put their password in. And just as an educational thing, like sometimes it takes that to kind of wake up and yeah. uh, realize what you've done. Like, what have I done now? <laughs> and I think there are some companies that you can hire to try and fish your team as well. Um, I don't know any off the top of my head, but I, I feel like I've heard of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Just Google search. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's in, you know, make sure it's reputable. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> make sure they're not the fishers. Yeah, like, right. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be a great company to start? Right. <laughs> uh, so, you, so you talk about awareness in, in, in your daily life, and then kind of the second baseline for me is password security that we kind of just talked about, and having <laughs> secure and unique passwords for every single login that you have, from your home Wi-Fi to your local machine to every internet site, having unique and strong passwords for, for every login. And then, of course, how do you keep track of that? to define unique and long. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you that saw my talk earlier, uh, at Mogledom, where I previously worked, I decrypted everyone's passwords to prove a point. And guess who's got decrypted also? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good, it wasn't good. Like, yeah. consider what unique and long means, mm -hmm. and consider purchasing a password manager or something. Yeah. There's a, there's a great uh, XKCD um, comic that talks about uh, password strength and bits of entropy mm -hmm. um, and how a, uh, um, you know, as you, every time you add a character, it becomes um, significantly, uh, takes significantly more effort. There was a, um, yeah, yeah uh, I saw something a little while ago um, and I'll try to find it and I'll post it on Twitter. Um, but it was uh, a data set where they analyzed, I think they took all the, all the publicly released password hacks uh, that were available and they analyzed all the passwords and they posted some graphs and some heat maps as to what, uh, what was going on. And the heat maps made it very clear that when a password requires a capital letter, 70% of people, whatever the number was, had it the first letter. Mm -hmm. They needed a special character. It was almost always at the end. Mm -hmm. Like um, an exclamation mark at the yep. end. Yep. Um, the numbers, they had a chart of the, the number frequency in, uh, in it, and it basically indicated that it was like birthdays or birth years or anniversaries, and it was like, it, it was interesting how it faded off, and you could very clearly see like what patterns were in people's passwords. Um, so just being aware of those things and knowing like what common uh, human behavioral elements are that uh, people just are comfortable with and they just, they, that's how they think, but being secure is sometimes reversing that or doing the unexpected in order to be more secure. Yeah, that URL I just wrote up there, it's have I been pwned or pwned, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dot com forward slash passwords. If you put a password in there that you've used in the past, it'll tell you if it's appeared in any data breaches. And your, your, your email too, it will tell you if your email appears anywhere. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I think, uh, I'm trying to think of what I know so I don't say that. I think LinkedIn had some yeah. data hacked a while ago, but it will say whose email, uh, like the emails that were hacked, but it will also tell you what data was hacked, your birthday, your, your friend list, or your, your password, and then you can make more informed changes uh, on your privacy levels and your passwords and stuff. It always jumps out as a red flag to me when I'm uh, uh, setting a password somewhere and they have limitations on length or what characters yeah. you can use. I mean, you know, you should be hashing passwords, and if you are, then none of that should matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of a, a scary, 
scary thing when you see that. It was a um, in WordPress. Uh, is everybody familiar with the password strength meter? Um, so that, that was one of the first things I brought up to add to WordPress. But that's a Dropbox library, and it was a, uh, a library that they built in JavaScript to uh, calculate the strength based on different factors. Um, and it's called ZXC BN. It's uh, basically just the bottom of the keyboard to N. <laughs> but um, it, it talks about that, and it, it takes um, several popular websites, including some banks and some uh, big financial companies, and it talks about the limitations in characters and how that affects uh, the, the entropy of the password and, and how secure it is. And uh, it, it's very limiting. And like, like an eight to 10, eight to 12 character password can still be cracked usually in like an hour at the most, even if you're using good practices in, in your password. And, um, so th those limits are, yeah, they're always alarming. It's like, what? All my money's in here, and I can only put a six-character password. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we get in such a frenzy when we're told, you know, you go to log in your bank or whatever, and it's update your password. We're in such a, we're we're rushing, we're in such a frenzy that we just throw our birthday in there, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, I'll go back later, but but we don't, and uh, the implications of that are far-reaching because all of these services are connected. Yes. I, th I was going to say, I think it comes back to, again, human behavior. You put in what you're used to because you remember it. Mm -hmm. um, but things are getting, like the new iOS, you can have, uh, on most apps, there's a button, you click it, and it uses it pulls up your password manager, and you can put it in. And so when you enter, I use one pass, so it's hooked up to my iPhone. And if I'm on my computer, you know, and I, I put in a password, it syncs over in my iCloud, and... Um, I can put in as long a password as I want because it's going to help me as long as I log in. And whatever means it will, it will let me just cut and paste it in there automatically. Yeah, one, one password in iOS 12 is awesome. It's it's super so sweet, and not everything supports it yet. And I always I'm like, oh, how did I live without right. this before? But no, um, it, it is, it's it's awesome. It's a solution to one of the biggest frustrations that I've had in the past. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a question. If I go into one of the financial sites that I if I type in the, the wrong password three times, right, they, they, they close it down. So how do how these hackers get around uh, that kind of description? That can be hard, yeah. Um, that's basically to prevent brute force hacking. So that's basically they set up a computer and they just try every single password that it can. Um, and eventually it's going to get it. It might take millions of years. It might take 10 seconds, you know. Um, so it's, it's, that makes it harder to get around that, but then they also introduces a user frustration, like, oh, I, I really just can't remember, not, you know, um, and it doesn't tell you the password requirements either, so you don't know, like, oh, this one requires a capital, so my dog's name is capitalized, and I, oh, it needs numbers, I put his birthday, you know, whatever, so you don't know that, and so sometimes you just forget, um, but the, yeah, that's, that's hard to get around, there's probably ways. Well, that's where that's where you jump off of passwords and you get into uh, two-factor and multi-factor authentication, right? So you've yeah. all tried to log in somewhere, uh, and you have to first to have a code that's sent to your phone, so you can enter the code, so you can get to the login screen. That's two-factor. Multi-factor um, is the same, but <clears throat> you have a phone and then some other method um, that you have to verify too. Now, who knows in the future maybe. Uh, you know, we've got fingerprint already on our laptops and our phones. Um, there's nothing that says in the future there might not be a DNA-based uh, security uh, for any kind of devices or even our, our vehicles, our homes, or who knows. You know, uh, that's the kind of stuff I'm, I'm, I like to read about and I'm interested <coughs> in because at some point, passwords are going to be cracked. And, and it won't matter if it's a 64-length uh, password at some point the computing power is just going to be there right so yeah and so I think nowadays right like brute forcing <laughs> your financial institutions password at with you as a specific target sure might be tricky might be doable might not but when you look at the entire scope of all these millions of users like this financial institution 
when you go mm -hmm. download that data, they're going to have hits. They're going to get in to some people's accounts. Now, if you've used that password somewhere else, it's a good chance that's how they get into your specific account. If you have practiced good password security and you're using a long, unique password for every different thing, they're not getting into your bank. Not that way. That's one of the nice things that 1Password does as well is they, they compare your data against the half iPhone mm -hmm. database. So it'll show you uh, this, <laughs> this password uh, was exposed in a breach or is, yeah. is vulnerable. And, and sometimes it's just they take the email and the password there and they hit every single site in their list. They might get into a couple, they might not. Um, and sometimes, like the data that's published to educate people, uh, they use it against people. So maybe they hit the bank and they try, uh, the bank might not lock out different username attempts. It might not use IP address or machine. So they might hit every single possible username with the top three passwords in the world. And they might hit some, they might not. But if they get into one and there's a couple thousand dollars in there, this like 10 minute script that they wrote to go through this database of, of possibilities sometimes is, is more than worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share a stat that some of you may have heard earlier, but uh, hackers will tell you, even hackers <laughs> that aren't world class, best in the world hackers, if they're targeting somebody, they will compromise them 100% of the time. If you become a target, you're going to get owned. Like, it's that simple, whether you're a business or a person. Mm -hmm. uh, they love to brag. Hackers love to brag usually. Well, that's how the majority of them get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question about um, WordPress security plugins? I know, you know there's a number of them out there. Which ones do you guys recommend? Uh, so there are a, a number of them out there. I would say that the the the, uh, the most popular ones are um, Security, iThemes Security, and WordFence. Mm -hmm. um, so in my opinion, any security plugin. Oh, and sorry, and uh, Jetpack, Jetpack um, has the the brute force uh, and also Scanner, don't they? I mean, yeah, they've got a few um, things. Yeah, they're all good, right? They all do good things. And what you're seeing with those solutions are immediate feedback on kind of the security, the baseline security health of your website. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend one over the other. Um, I would just look at the specific features and benefits of each one and then make that decision uh, just you know based on your personal preference. Um, but I would also argue that in addition to plug-in-based security, you would also want to look for something that's cloud-based as well. Um, so whether that's a scanner or a web application firewall, um, web application firewalls, in my opinion, are probably the, the number two most important thing or number one most important thing that you could do to help secure any website. And for those of you that don't know what a web application firewall is, it's basically a hardware and software solution that sits between someone requesting um, data from your host, uh, and it's designed to automatically block, excuse me, malicious scripts because that's the majority of the hacking that happened. It's all automated bots. So, so if you were being attacked, uh, so so a web application firewall one automatically stops malicious scripts because it identifies them before it even gets to your web server, before it has a chance to look for weak passwords or look for outdated software. But then if you do experience a DDoS or some kind of a brute force attack, usually the web application firewall will recognize that as well uh, because those are kind of AI based. Um, so they, they should be able to recognize that sort of thing. I would add one thing to that. Um, I don't know the advantages and disadvantages of all the different products, but whichever one you do select, make sure they have good support so that if you do have an issue, you can talk to a human and they can help you work through it. Because unless you're a dev or an engineer, like you might get stuck and be in a worse situation, right? Just knowing you've been hacked or knowing there's this attack going on doesn't really help you solve the problem. And if you don't have the level of confidence to get through that, definitely make sure you have good support on the other end. Mm -hmm. and, and to add to that too, um, don't go crazy. Don't be like, I'm gonna have the most secure site, I'm gonna put all of them on and activate them all at once. <laughs> that don't always work. Um, but the right plugin will also be different for every site. 
you might sure. be for some reason very susceptible to brute force attacks. You know, um, someone else might be very susceptible to DDoS attacks, where someone requests your site millions and millions of times a minute, and it just brings your server down. Um, so the the needs are gonna be different from a bank to you know your blog that you write about political things or whatever um, your your content is. Um, but yeah, it's it's you might be able to use some in tandem, but uh, it's usually better to pick the one that best suits your needs and and use that. Um, on the the wide area uh, concept, one thing I like to recommend is Cloudflare. Um, so Cloudflare has that concept, but it does it on the DNS level. So it intercepts part of the, like earlier in the request. Um, it's also similar to how uh, Jetpack does it uh, and protects against the brute force, is it kind of cr uh, crowdsources the data. So if your site gets attacked and it's this bot and it gets identified as malicious and you're also on Cloudflare and then it goes and attacks him, it already knows that that's a bad person. Um, so it's by, by crowdsourcing the data, it, it makes it uh, more powerful, much better to uh, at protecting you. Power of many. <laughs> Who's got the next question? I think we have about eight minutes. I saw the thing. We do. <clears throat> yes. What is your <clears throat> number one top security tip that you wish our clients? I wish that everybody used a VPN, uh, and that's a virtual private network. <clears throat> uh, so when you're connecting to the university Wi-Fi or in the coffee shop, um, you activate a VPN on your laptop or your phone, and it encrypts the data that's going between your device and the Wi-Fi, uh, because Wi-Fi, uh, rogue Wi-Fi's and, and Wi-Fi sniffing is a thing. Um, search Betsy Davies, and she's an 11-year-old girl whose dad showed her a YouTube video, and she went to the coffee shop, set up a fake Wi-Fi signal, and then started sniffing everybody's traffic and looking at the data on their devices. Uh, it's a real thing, and, and just be aware, too, if you go to Starbucks, it's like it's Google Starbucks, but it's not Google Starbucks Plus, mm. or it's, you know, it's not early to... Early. USM. USM. It's not USM <laughs> guest with two S's. Uh, that kind of awareness. I think I have two. One is uh, on us as uh, web industry people versus HTTPS. So having an SSL certificate on your site is free. Now there's, there's really no reason why you shouldn't have it. Um, at Bluehost, we it doesn't matter. We automatically provision you with a Let's, Let's Encrypt uh, SSL certificate and it renews every three months, it's, and, it, and it just is there for you. Um, but it's still something that's not, not widely adapt, adopted by many sites. And um, so basically what that will do is it will protect your traffic with your users um, from being intercepted between their computer and your uh, server. Um, so it's just a, it's a very easy thing to get set up. A lot of times you can just reach out to your host support and ask them to configure it for you and they handle it. Um, there are ex very expensive ones. Um, but they basically, uh, they vouch and they audit the server a bit more to make sure that it actually is secure. Um, but a general free one is, is more than good to at least get you started on that. Um, and the other one would just be uh, higher, higher requirements for passwords or uh, to maybe you have a bunch of developers on your repositories and in your organization. Um, your organization on GitHub can require two-factor authentication for all your 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 members. Um, so taking that initiative and and increasing your security in your organization and lead by example is is another one. Um, and yet, just like I said before, just helping to educate people and, and opening their eyes and trying to get them to realize why it's important for them to for this to be important in their business. That's all very very sound technical advice and I completely agree um, but my number one thing would be uh, awareness right like ask the question am I secure have this conversation with somebody else have this conversation with the people in your family you know uh, we're starting to see how deeply embedded security is into our lives I mean people's financial lives get ruined 
you know, their reputations get ruined. And this is only going to get far worse if we don't start spreading awareness. So that's my tip. Uh, Adam, do you still see VPNs as being as valuable as they were, say, five years ago with the sort of wider proliferation of SSL certs? I, I know, like personally, I don't use a VPN as often as I did because of uh, the fact that almost every site has SSL. Yeah, well, I do think it's still um, as important um, just because of that simple fact of it's, it's not just it's not just the sites you're visiting, right? It's the, it's the data that's floating through the air. Um, and in terms of connecting to a Wi-Fi signal, I think that's where it, its importance yeah. comes in, right? Yeah. Um, but you're right, it's, it's, there's, there's probably a good, a good debate there whether it, it is as important as it, as it used to be. But for me, it is. Yeah, I, I think it is because um, a lot of times now you're not just protecting yourself from hackers, but you're also protecting yourself from people that don't maliciously have malicious intent. So maybe your internet service provider has server logs of you as a customer, what sites you start visit, you start visiting. So maybe you go to something very controversial and then somebody gets a hold of that list and you might have been just researching something, but then all of a sudden you're associated with this website and that's, that's now dangerous. Um, and you might not be able to trust these big corporations, and, and I'm not trying to be conspiracy theory, make you all scared, but it's something you should think about. And we all know it happens. It, it, it happens, yeah. and it's happened in history, and it happens in other countries that are less uh, politically free than we are, you know, and there's oppression. So it's, it's something to think about, and, and uh, it's, it's a healthy discussion to have. And, but a VPN would, uh, in most cases, prevent your internet service provider from go knowing what you're going to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, internet law is still very much the Wild West. Like, mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen. You know? and, and you don't know who works at the company. Like, maybe the company is very good, but they might just get this one, um, I, kind of a bad example, but um, with the whole, um, the guy that, uh, Edward, Edward Snowden, like, he worked in, in, in government and he saw something and he blew a whistle and it was a good whistle blow, but um, you know, wh who's to say it's a good whistle blow? Maybe someone thinks they're doing good, but they're actually doing harm by exposing certain things. And um, so it might not just be a company. It might also be one person acting uh, with data they have that uh, is, is, is indicative of something you do. Do you have a VPN solution you like? I like Tunnel Bear. Um, it's Tunnel bear, yeah. It's a, it, aside from having a super cute mascot, um, <laughs> it's that they, they like have WordPress. A, yeah, <laughs> they have like oh, they have a a free a free level, uh, but then the paid level I think starts at nine bucks a month or something. But, yeah. Is it too late to start using one if you haven't in the past? No, no, it's never too late. Start now. Start yeah. today. <laughs> Um, why do you think the password managers are good? I mean, with all these huge profile places can get hacked, why can't they get hacked? I like to, the answer to that question from me is two things. There's no such thing as 100% security mm -hmm. in life or on the internet. There just isn't and there never will be. So in my mind, it's about reducing that attack radius, right? So when you're using a password manager, you're reducing that attack radius, but there's still that chance that that password manager service will get hacked. But then don't they know everybody that you have a password for? Potentially, yeah. LastPass has been hacked before, but the hack didn't, because, because they're a security company and they put a bunch of different layers of uh, protection in, the, the people who hacked LastPass didn't get access to the actual usernames and passwords, and I'd rather entrust all of that stuff to a company that is, that's their core business, right? Um, instead of my notepad in my drawer. That is also why enabling two-factor authentication everywhere yeah. that you can is very important. Yeah, good question though, because that, that is, that's, yeah. it always comes down to that. And I know, I know one password, your, your vault is encrypted locally, yeah. so sure. it's synced in their servers between devices, but they don't have access to the data in 
your uh, in your vault because yeah. that's the one password you have to remember. And that one can be really secure and really long, but it's the one that you have to remember. Um, okay. uh, one password. Uh, one yeah. 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 I think, and the other part of that too is that uh, hackers want the easy wins. They don't want to spend their time on the on the passwords that are going to take them three days to crack. Most of the time, if it takes more than like 20, 30 seconds, they're not interested. They want to move on. Yeah. And it's, it's about getting as many people as they can, as easy as they can. Um, and so being proactive in 2FA, uh, having a long password, secure password, that's hard to crack. These are just things you can do to, to kind of get them to move along. All right, well, thank you guys very much uh, for your time and expertise today. Thank you. And look forward to seeing everyone at the party in 20 minutes. All right.